Assalamu alaikum students. Uh, today we are learning the topic uh, Boogie and Logic that is chapter number 10 of our book. Uh, what is it? You need to know that we have to study the symbols, the functions of these gates uh, that are written in here, not and or nand nor and zor. We also need to uh, create the circuits from the given problem or the expression or the truth table. And we'll also be learning how to complete the truth table from a given problem, a logic expression, or a, or a logic circuit. One important thing that you need to see is the symbols are there, uh, the not gate symbol, the or gate, the uh, and gate. And you can see that the moment you have the a bubble with the OR gate, it forms in the NOR gate. Same goes for NAND gate also. A small circle after the AND gate is going to make it the NAND gate, and then the ARC is going to create the ZOR gate. One more important thing is the number of outcomes, as you can see below, is depending upon a uh, formula. There's two to the power N, where N is the number of inputs that are given to the circuit or that are given to the gate. Uh, as you can see, there is one input only, as in the case of NOT gate, then, then you will be getting two possible outcomes. If there are two inputs given to the gate or the circuit, then you'll be having the total out outcomes as four. So the formula is very simple. That is two to the power N, where N is the number of inputs to the gate or to the circuit. I hope that it's very much clear to you. Now coming to the first gate, there is the NOT gate. As you can see, this is getting one input only. The number of combinations is two. The input is zero. The result is going to be a one. If the input is a one, the result will be a zero. And its logic notation is going to be x equals to not a, where x is denoting the outcome or the output. And as far as Boolean algebra is concerned, you can see the bar above the input is going to denote it's the Boolean algebra. After this not gate, the next gate is my AND gate. As you can see, this is getting two inputs. The output x is 1 if both inputs a and b are 1. When it's a very simple thing that you can see here is the moment if any one input uh, out of 2 or uh, whatever the, the number of uh, inputs are is a 0, then the result is going to be a 0. In all other cases, you can see 0, 0 is a 0, 0 and 1 is a 0, 1 and 0 is a 0. Only when the both of the inputs are 1s, only then the result is going to be a 1. As far as the logic notation is concerned, you can see it's written as x equals to a and b. And as far as the Boolean algebra is concerned, it is a dot b. So please be cautious. It's going to be the Boolean algebra also that you need to know. The third gate is my OR gate. As you can see, it's by, again, getting two inputs. Two inputs means the number of outcomes will be four. And you can see the, outco the output x is one if either input a or b or both are one. As you can see, in, in any of the scenarios, you can see here, only when zero, zero is there, the result is a zero. In all other cases, even if one input is a one, then the outcome is a one. How is it being written in logic notation? As you can see, it's written as x equals to a or b. Be cautious. All the gates, all the notations are written in capital. Um, you need to follow this convention. And as far as the Boolean algebra is concerned, it's written as x equals to a plus b. Moving on to the fourth gate, that is my uh, NAND gate, which is actually the NOT plus AND gate. As you can see, the small circle of the AND gate is going to make it in the NAND gate. And the description is the output X is 1 if input A and B are NOT, both 1. And you can see uh, 0, NAND 0 is a 1, 0, NAND 1 is a 1, 1, NAND 0 is a 1. 1 and 1 is going to give you the value of 0. Or in other words, if you are facing problem, then how can you learn it is you're going to reverse the AND gate and you will get the NAND gate. And it's written as x equals to A NAND B, which is the knowledge notation. And it's written as x equals to A dot B with a bar. And this bar is denoting the knotting process or the reversing or the inverting process. Then you have the NOR gate. The NOR gate again is getting two inputs. And after the OR gate, you have the small circle. This, this is going to make it the reverse or the uh, knotting. Then you have the output X is 1 if neither input A nor input B is 1. You can see the input 0 or 0. Then you have the NOR process going on and the result is a 1. In all other cases, you can see the result is a 0. 
or in, in, in other words, if you're facing a problem, you can see it in this manner. Okay, you are going to reverse or invert the OR gate and you will get the NOR gate. It is written as X equals to A NOR B. The logic notation is written as X equals to A plus B with a bar. It is also going to denote the NOR process, the NORing. The last gate is ZOR gate. And it's very simple to remember. Simple thing, how is it being drawn? Then arc. Then we have the output X is 1 if input A is 1 and input B is 0 or input A is 0 and input B is 1. It's very simple. You just can remember in this manner that the moment you have the opposite inputs, the result is a 1. And then if it's the same input, the result is a 0. As you can, you can see, 0, ZOR, 0 is a 0. 1, ZOR, 1 is a 0. In both other cases, you are getting the result as 1. 0 or ZOR, 1 is a 1 and 1, ZOR, 0 is also a 1. How is it written in the logic notation? Again, very simple. A equals to X, ZOR, B. And as far as the Boolean algebra is concerned, it is going to be A dot B dash plus A dash dot B. Or you can simply say it's going to be the adding process that I'm keeping here and the all which is happening here. You will continue to uh, learn something similar to this one in the, later, in the uh, later chapter as well. I hope that the beginning of this is very clear. You are not facing any problem with this uh, beginning. Okay, now, since you have understood and learned the logic gates, now is the job of uh, solving the given circuit and making the truth table. You can see that what are we doing right now? We are starting with an example. And this is example number one of our book, where we are given this circuit. One important thing that you can see here is the circuit is composed of three inputs, A, B, C. That is where the number of outcomes will be eight. As you can see, this, this A, B, C is combinations are going to be either A, B, C is both are th all three of them are zero. You can see zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, double one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. This is clear to you. That's wonderful. But otherwise, there is one more uh, way through which you can understand the input values. The input values are either in this manner. We have four zeros, four ones, Double zero, double one, double zero, double one, zero one, zero one, zero one, zero one. So either way, you can understand and remember the sequence of the input values. But an important question is, uh, there are two inputs and the number of outcomes are going to be four. Uh, three inputs, the number, of, the number of outcomes will be eight. As you can see, that is being mentioned here. Now moving on to the intermediate values. What is the, what is the purpose? You can see. What we have done is we have bifurcated, divided our um, logic circuit into different portions and we have labeled them. You can see what is does it mean? A and B is denoted as a P. And we are going to solve this P here in this column. Similarly, what you can see, this uh, NOR gate is getting two inputs. One is coming from C and second one is coming from the letter B, from the signal B. One important thing, as you can see here, is this dot denotes it's actually something that is going to two uh, gates. The first one is going to the AND gate, and the second time, the same signal B is going to the NOR gate. And that is why it is shown with, by a dot. As is the case here, C is going here to the NOR gate, as well as C is going to the last ZOR gate as well. The uh, process of B NOR C is denoted as a Q here. We have labeled it as a, as a Q, and that is written in our this column. Now moving on to the last, uh, this gate, this uh, the uh, OR gate, and this is labeled as R, and this R is obtained by OR, by the process of OR of P or Q. So the last R is going to be obtained from P or Q, and then we have the last one, ZOR gate, and this ZOR gate is going to work on C, ZOR, R. So you can see the last X is going to be obtained when we are performing the ZOR operation on C, ZOR, R. I hope that we are very much clear. Now, moving back to the same, you can recall your uh, two tables. And now I'm working on B. B is obtained by looking at columns A, B. So what I'm doing is I'm only looking at columns A, B. And you can see 0 and 0 is a 0. That's why I got a P value as 0. 0 and 0 is a 0. 0 and 1 is a 0. 0 and 1 is a 0. 1 and 0 is a 0, 1 and 0 is a 0, 
only the last two are going to give you the value of one because one and one is a one and one and one and one is a one. I hope that's very much easy to understand how P is being generated. Moving on to Q, Q is basically the NOR gate. And you can see now when I'm working on this Q, for this Q, I'll be referring to columns B and C. And for this, I'll only refer to these two columns, nothing else but these two columns only. You can see here, column B and column C. So it is basically zero, nor zero is a one, zero, nor one is a zero, one, nor zero is a zero, one, nor one is a zero, zero, nor zero is a one, and all others are also a zero. So you can see in this manner, I have formed the column Q by performing the nor operation from the signals that are coming from B and C. The result is going to R, and this R is generated by the more process of P or Q. So when I'm working on R, I'll only refer to these two columns, and I'll find out P or Q, 0 or 1, a 1, 0 or 0, a 0, 0 or 0, a 0, 0 or 0, a 0, 0 or 1 is a 1, 0 or 0 is a 0, 1 or 0 is a 1. And similarly, the last one is also going to be a 1 because it's going to be performed, performed by the OR operation. Then the last column X is obtained by the process of ZOR, and this ZOR is going to work with columns C and R. So when I'm working for X, I'll ignore all the columns in between, and I'll only concentrate on column C and column R. Column C is zero, and column R is one. So you can see it's basically zero, ZOR one, and that will be a one because the signals are opposite. Same goes here, one or zero is a one, Zero or zero is a zero because of signals being same. Similarly, one or zero is a one because signals being opposite. Zero or one is a one. Similarly, one or zero is a one. Zero or one is a one. And one or one is only a zero. So in this manner, you can see that the last operation X is obtained by forming something in between, which I divided into different parts. And we have labeled them in order to make it very easy for us to comprehend. And these intermediate values are very important. So whenever you get your question in the question paper, you're always given these values. Uh, and then you have uh, you are given this intermediate values and you have to find it, them out by labeling them in your circuit. And you can see we have one, two, three, four gates. The intermediate values are three. In this manner, you can attempt at activity 10.2, question number one, very easily because that is based on something similar to what we have learned right now. Try it out. Inshallah, you will be successful in doing this easily. Inshallah. But one caution is two inputs means it's going to be four outcomes. For three inputs means it is going to be eight outcomes. Now moving on to activity 10.2, as I was telling you, that you have to perform the activity by drawing the truth table. And since it is a two input circuit, that's why the number of outcomes will be four. If there are three inputs as is, as is present in the case of uh, point C, top topic C, so you can see there are three inputs, that's why the number of outcomes will be eight. In this manner, you can very easily attempt the entire activity uh, just by performing the same operation as we have learned right now. Moving on to part number two, question number two of this question that deals with that you have to frame what? You have to frame the logic expression from the given circuit. And what will you do? It's very simple. Very simple to remember. What you will do is you will bifurcate your uh, expression, your like logic circuit in two different parts. You can label this part as the left side. The upper part is the left side hand side, and the right and the right hand side is going to contain the values that are present in the lower part of your logic circuit. What you can see here is this is the upper part, and then final operation is the ZOR gate. So what I will write is I will draw in between and then I, I'm going to say A and B because this and signal is on the upper side of the di diagram of the circuit and I will have the A and B operation. Then we have this uh, operation which is B nor C and I will simply write it this down on the right hand side of the uh, ZOR gate and the, what my final expression will be A and B ZOR B nor C. I think it's very simple. You can understand it very easily and you can attempt it very easily. After we have done with all these activities, what are we doing right now is we are forming an expression from the circuit, from the from the truth table. 
earlier we have done something different that was we were given a circuit and from there we had from form the logic expression now we are learning how can we frame a logic expression if i am given the truth table now this is very simple what you need to understand is you only need to identify all those rows which have the result of one in the right output x column as is the case in this example you can see that the output is one in only this scenario when where the value of a is a one and the value of b is a zero so how will I write it down? Very simple. Whenever you get a value of zero, it means it is the process that is being reversed. And it will mention that with the not gate. So what is the final outcome? It will be A and not B. As you can see here, the final answer is A and not B because of the reason that input A is a one and input B is a zero. I think it's very simple, not easy, uh, not very easy, not difficult at all. You can comprehend it very easily. Now moving on to the second example. Here you can see there are two rows that have the result of one. So what have we done here is we first of all identify the rows. The first row that has the value of one is A0 and B1. So what I wrote is A0 means it is not A and B. Then second, I identified the second, second row that had a value of one is one in A and one in B. So what I wrote as A and B. And then I wrote the or in between because this will be this is resulting in a value if any one of the situation is a true state situation, either not A and B or A and B. In both scenarios, we are getting the result as a one. And that is your final answer. And you can form an equation very easily from the given expression, very, very easily the same manner as you had been uh, forming earlier. So this is also possible that you can even equate as well. Moving on to one more quest question example. In this question, you can see there are three uh, inputs and that is why the number of outcomes is eight. No worries at all. What you will do now is you will simply take up all those rows. Principle remains the same. You will simply identify all those rows, rows that have the result of one in the output column. We have identified three rows here. Row number one that has this result, row number two that has this result, and row number three that has this result. What we will do now is we will take, we'll identify and we'll write them down. It is not A and not B and not C. You can see here, not A and not B and not C. Now, second one is, second row that if you have identified is row A, this one, where A is a Z1, B is a 0 and C is a 0. So what we wrote is A and not B and not C because of the reason A, B is a 0 and C is also a 0. On the contrary, if I move to the last one that is can result, resulting in a one is when A is one, B is one, and C is zero. That's why I wrote A and B and not C. Now, this is the first identification process where we have identified and written the values. And then the last stage is to form, form the final equation where we are going to put an OR gate in between all those scenarios that have the result of a one. So I hope that's very much clear to you. You can manage activity 10.4 very easily. Uh, if you attempt these questions, you'll be able to attempt uh, very easy 10.4 question number. Uh, 10.3 question number four you can be attempted very easily if you have understood this topic easily. Okay, thank you very much. Take care. Allah Hafiz.